By definition, a hyperbola is set of all points in a plane where the difference is distances from two distinct points called the foci is a positive constant. Now, just like any other conic section, we have two sets of formula or two sets of visuals for hyperbola. One that is opening vertically and the other one that is opening horizontally. Now, in this example that I have on the board, I have a hyperbola that's opening vertically. So, this will be your focus or one of the foci. So, we have two openings right here because a hyperbola is given by your conic sections that cut through the conic sections vertically. So, it forms two hyperbolas right here, which is now being shown in our figure. So, now we have the foci, we have the vertices, and we have the center. And on our formula later on, we're going to be finding for A and B, and including C, and that will be the distance from the center to your vertex, and that will give us the value of A in our formula. And to help us find the value of B, we will use the measurement or the distance from the center to one of your foci, which is your letter C or the constant C. And the standard equation of your hyperbola will be given by this formula, which is x minus h squared all over a squared minus y minus k squared all over b squared equal to 1. Now, this, is, this formula is quite familiar because this looks like your formula for an ellipse, and you are correct. The only difference for an ellipse and a hyperbola is your sign. So now you have the x-axis minus the y-axis equal to 1. Before, in an ellipse, it was the x-axis plus the y-axis equal to 1. So that's the difference between the two. So just like an ellipse, we have the same parts of the, ver of the hyperbola, the vertices, the foci, and the center. Now, this is your standard equation of hyperbola that we will use today, and we're going to be working on some problems involving hyperbola. Now, for our first example, we're going to learn how to graph a hyperbola. Now, compared to any other conic section, constructing the graph of hyperbola requires us to um, do a little bit of construction in our xy plane. And I'm going to show you the, those steps in a little while. So first, let's graph this equation, given that the equation has a center at 0, 0, with x squared all over 9 minus y squared all over 16 equal to 1. So we already know that this is a hyperbola because the standard equation that's given has the minus sign. Now, the first step is to construct your framework. So just like constructing uh, something out of the x and y plane, it is easier if we can construct the framework that we will use in our hyperbola so we would know how it will open and how wide or narrow your opening will be in terms of your hyperbola. So first, we need to find or we need to use the denominator of our first term and our second term. Now, the term with an x-axis gives us x squared is equal to 9, and if you take the square root of x, you'll have x equal to plus or minus 3. And this plus or minus 3 right here is the number of units away from the center along the x-axis. And this will help us in constructing our framework. Now, for our y-axis, we have y squared equal to 16, which gives us y equals plus or minus 4. And this plus or minus 4 values right here is the number that we will use in constructing our framework. So along the x-axis, there is a 3-unit distance away from the center going to the left and going to the right. So I have 1, 2, 3 units to the left and 1, 2, 3 units to the right for my x-axis. And for my y-axis, I have positive and minus 4. So I have 4 units up along the y-axis and 4 units down along the y-axis, creating a quadrilateral when I construct my framework. So along the x-axis, I will draw a vertical line. And along the y-axis, I will draw a horizontal line. And their intersection will help us find the asymptotes or the diagonals of your hyperbola. So your diagonals will help us in how or how much our hyperbola will be opening in our xy plane. And this is our first step, constructing our framework by constructing the rectangle 
and the vertical asymptote. And we will use this later on in our graphs of hyperbola. Now for step number two, we're going to find our foci. And to find the foci, we will use the formula c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. From step number one, we're able to find the value of a and b by using the denominator. So we know that this will be your A and this will be your B for your formula. So just plug it in to find the value of your C, which is C squared equal to 25. And to get rid of your exponent, you'll have C equal to plus or minus 5. Now, this is one important thing that you need to understand about graphing the hyperbola. The foci is along the x-axis since x squared is positive. So notice that in these two terms right here, the positive value is on our x-axis, and this will determine how our parabola will open. So it's safe to say that if the negative sign is with the x-axis, your parabola will be opening vertically. So remember, the opening of your parabola is dependent to the positive sign of your x or your y axis. And this example right here, we have a positive x, so we know that the foci will be along the x axis. That's why this number right here, which is c equal to plus or minus 5, will be the number or number of units away from the center going to your foci. So from 0, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 units away from the center to the left and 5 units away from the center to the right. And this will be your foci. And once we have our foci, we'll be able to construct our hyperbola. So our hyperbola for step number 3 is to basically use our framework to graph the hyperbola. So from the vertex, just draw a curvature right here, which helps us or the asymptotes should never cross or your graph should never cross your asymptote and you'll have a parabola opening horizontally like so. And this is step number three. The graph of your hyperbola given x squared all over 9 minus y squared all over 16 equal to 1 is given or drawn using the steps that we did for this example. So step number one, step number two, and step number three. Our framework, our asymptote, and our hyperbola. Now, let's have the second example. For this next example, we're given the parts of the hyperbola, and go we're going to be required to find the standard equation of the hyperbola, given the foci at negative 1, 2, and 5, 2, and vertices at 0, 2, and 4, 2. Now, just like the other conic sections that we did in the past, whenever we are given the parts of the conic section, the first step is to always plot the points that's given to us. So step number one, let's plot your foci and your vertices so that we can find one of the most important part of your um, hyperbola, which is your center. And this will be our first foci and our second foci, which is negative 1, 2, and 5, 2, and the vertices at 0, 2, and 4, 2. And we know the center is in the middle of, of your foci or your vertices, and we'll be able to find the coordinate of our center by positive 2 and positive 2. So therefore, in step number 2, which is finding A and C, we will also write out our center, which is at 2, 2, which will represent HK in the standard equation of your hyperbola. So from the standard equation, we already know what H and K is. We just need to find or figure out what A and B is in our formula. So let's use the distances from the center to your vertex or your focus to find A and C. So to find the value of A, it is basically the distance from your center to the vertex. So from the center to your vertex, it is one, two units away from the center. So you have two units for your A variable. And for your C variable, you have the distance from the center to the focus. So the distance from the center to the focus should be larger than the distance of your A. So we are given three units because there are three units away from the, from the center to the focus, and this will be the value of our C, which we will use in finding our value of B using step number three. So now that we have our A and we have our C, 
and also our hk, let's find b by using the formula c squared equal to a squared plus b squared. So we already know what a is and what c is. All we need to do is to use direct substitution to find the value of b. So we have 3 squared equal to 2 squared plus b squared, which gives us b squared is equal to 5. So just like an, el an ellipse, we don't need to take the square root of b squared because we know that we are using b squared in our formula. So b squared is equal to 5. We just need to square the value of a that we found a while ago so a is equal to 2 so in our standard equation of hyperbola it will turn into 4 so to write out your equation the standard equation of your ellipse will be x minus 2 squared all over 4 minus y minus 2 squared all over 5 equal to 1 and that's how we use the formula